Okay, so in the previous video, we introduced this del operator. We talked about how to use that to define the gradient, the divergence, the curl. Um, before we move on to divergence and curl, which are kind of the new objects, we're just going to do a quick recap of, well, what does the gradient do for us, right? So let me, let me remind you. that if we have, well, first of all, if I have just a function, let's do this in R2 just to keep things simple, right? So if I have a function, I know that the gradient of that function is this vector. Well, now we can think of this as a vector field, right? So this vector field with components given by the partial derivatives of our function, okay? So what do we know about the gradient? Um, we know that, we know that we can use the gradient to calculate directional derivatives, right? So we know that if I wanted to calculate the derivative of f in the direction of some unit vector u, I know that one way I can do that is by computing the gradient and then taking the dot product with u, right? Um, if u happens to be non-unit, uh, then we should divide by, by the magnitude of u, right? Um, so we should put that in there. Um, and, and we know that the, the magnitude, right, so this, this directional derivative gives you a number. Um, and, and that number is measuring the rate at which your function is changing in a particular direction. And you can see that the rate, well, you know, it doesn't depend on the size of u, it only depends on the direction of u, right? So it depends on the magnitude of the gradient. So the gradient is giving you this measure of steepness. So, you know, if we think about a function of two variables, let's just actually start an example, right? So let's say we do something like um, f of x, y is, oh, let's say 4 minus x squared minus 2y squared, something like that. So if you were to, if you were to graph this thing, right, think about the three-dimensional graph, we would have something which kind of looks like, how's it going to look? It's going to be kind of steeper in the y direction, right? Yeah. So it's going to be kind of something that comes down like this, comes down like that. Like that, right? And get these kind of elliptical cross sections. Let me try to do a reasonable job of this. So we get something, something that looks like this, right? So All right, so, so it's, it's, a, uh, it's an elliptical paraboloid opening downwards, right? So we get this sort of object. If we were, so the graph would look something like this. If we were looking at level curves, they're going to look something like something like that, right? And one of the things that we know is, is so the, the gradient gives a measure of sort of the steepness along the graph, right, a steepness. And it also, at a given point on the graph, we can, we can use the gradient. We know that the dot product is going to be a maximum when these vectors are parallel, right? So the gradient is also giving us this sort of direction of maximum increase, right? So the gradient tells us about kind of the uh, um, direction of of max, you know, um, increase or, or, or decrease if you move opposite the gradient. 
So there's this notion of steepest ascent or descent. Um, we also know that uh, the gradient is going to be normal. It's a normal vector to the level curves. Or level surfaces if we were doing this um, for a function of three variables, right? Um, so that means that if I were to plot the gradient vector field, right, which is a, which is a vector field in R2, right? Input, you know, x, y are, are coordinates in R2. The output should be a vector in R2. So those are vectors in the plane, right? And, and what they look like is they, you know, they're, they're normal vectors to these to these level curves. So you get something that looks like this, right? Um, and if you go in, well they're you know they're just going to be same idea but a little bit shorter. Right? And a little bit shorter. And so you can uh, you could plot the whole thing if you were if you were so inclined. And the other thing you can do is, you know, one of the things you can do with gradients is you can talk about these, like, these gradient flows, right? Um, you want to find kind of the path of steepest ascent or descent, right? Um, well, what you do is you, you're looking for a path so that it's always tangent to the gradient, right? So you're looking for paths that, that kind of follow the gradient vector as you go. Um, and, and so that's also a path which is going to be always perpendicular to the curve, so it always crosses the level curves at right angles. And you find that uh, what you get here is going to be kind of paths that come in like this, right? Paths that look like that. Like that, right? Or like that, right? So you can, you can find these trajectories as well. This is another thing that um, you can do if you're studying gradients. Um, so we'll, um, we'll come back to some of this later on. We'll talk about kind of the relevance of gradients as a vector field. Among all vector fields, what's special about gradients? These are things that we'll, uh, we'll discuss as we continue on through the vector calculus material.